So I went to the Standing for Women event in Brighton last weekend. I knew from the moment it was announced that I was going to go, after the way the trans activist savages behaved in Bristol, I made getting to Brighton a priority and my husband came too. I had watched Kelly J's video updates on the arrangements and I think it was the last one she did before the event that made me nervous. Nervous about how I was going to feel on the day. How angry were they going to make me? I don't like feeling angry, but these days I find it impossible to bottle up. I've become an angry old woman. Kelly J had been saying we should dress the part, like wear our billboard t-shirts or something to show that we were on the side of women's rights and caring for children's health and of opposing homophobia and lesbophobia in order that the police and security would be able to distinguish us from the cretinous bullies that would turn up to try and intimidate us. Then, I think it was in the very last video she made before Sunday, she said something like, it might be best to wear something over our t-shirts until we were safely there in the part of the park, Victoria Gardens, where our event would take place. And from that, I, I sensed something. <laughs> She'd got some perhaps advice from the police, that things could get very nasty. So the night before travelling down, I felt nervous. I didn't sleep a wink. In the morning, I couldn't eat a thing. And I decided to dress very discreetly in the hope of blending in with the ordinary people on the streets of Brighton. Ta-da! <laughs> That was on the train going down. I also took my handmade costume with me and I wanted to put it on before getting off the train. Um, I'd made some leaflets and wanted to walk to the venue in my costume, handing them out. But Alan didn't like that idea. He thought it would be too provocative in what is possibly the wokest, looniest town in the country. No offence. Now, in one of her videos, Kelly J had given some sound advice about engaging with the enemy. I thought she was very smart in her wording, which amounted to something like, we are free to engage, but what would be our purpose? What would we achieve? Very good point, given that these people are deeply misogynistic and aren't open to reason. So when we arrived at the park, and just like in Bristol, there was a scum of trans activists. You may not know that the collective noun for trans activists, aka gender nutters, is a scum. It started out as an acronym. Society for crazy, unconscionable morons. That'll do. And when each of them was born, the doctor would turn over the newborn baby. And if it was talking out of its arse, it was assigned a trans activist. So, a scum of trans activists shouting abuse at the top of their voices, protected by a line of Rosses. Please. So, I just had to go and shout back at them. I can't help myself. And it was such fun. Trans rights are men's rights. Trans rights are men's Of course you can't. You're deaf. You're deaf to reason. Your death to feminism. The stupid stuff they shout. Turfs go home. No turfs on our turf. The entitlement of them thinking they should be able to control who stands on the ground they are standing on. And so I pointed out in a very loud voice that we were already home. That this is our turf because we are on Turf Island. Hello! The police were a bit better than the ones in Bristol, but still wrong in letting the protesters get so close to us that most people couldn't hear the speakers. Ultimately, that doesn't matter because the speeches were recorded and are available to view here on Kelly J's YouTube channel. 
the important thing is to be there to show them we won't be intimidated and to have a good time and socialize. We did all that and I'm sorry I didn't do more. The best moment for me was meeting the 14 year old daughter of one of my Facebook friends and being told that she loves my videos. That means so much to me that a girl as young as that appreciates my work. Mwah. Thank you. Now, some of the police officers obviously hated being between two groups shouting at each other. It must have been awful hearing dozens of people shouting and screaming and some of them had noisemakers just like they were advised to bring to drown out our voices because they are so desperate that we shouldn't be heard because they know they can't beat us in arguments and debates. And even more awful for those hapless police officers when some of them started shouting back. But to be honest, it's their fault. If the police had kept the protesters at more of a distance away, we wouldn't be bothered about them. But until the police realise that, I think we should protest back just as loudly across the police line. We shouldn't have to just put up and shut up, and I've no intention of doing so. These people are behaving like this because they can, because they know they can get away with it, even though, as Ian Aitchison, the former Home Office official, said, after Bristol, there's a fistful of public order legislation that would have enabled officers to first warn and then arrest these screeching men and women, of course. See this. So we have an attempted in circulation. What are the police doing? Absolutely nothing. These fellas are attempting to circle around the women. You see, this is utter chaos, as to be expected. We're getting encircled. That sounds like the excellent DJ Lippy speaking. I must have nicked this from their YouTube channel, Make More Noise. So I'll link to that below and urge you to support that channel, another gender critical channel. I put on my handmade costume in front of the crowd of rubble and as I did so I heard one of the actual handmaids say huh, where did you buy that Poundland <laughs> <laughs> well duh no it's haute couture actually you silly moo it's handmade oh handmade by Armani why is your handmade costume dearer than mine Muppet the one thing that really disgusted me, though, was that, well, actually, there were loads of things that disgusted me. But one thing that disgusted me in particular was that there were a few people on their side who looked even older than I am. They probably aren't. They're probably just rough as badgers' asses, as they say. But whereas it's kind of easy to dismiss the children as the ignorant wankers they are, there really is no excuse for people in their 50s and 60s and even older to behave like silly children. Oh, look at this old woman honking her little toy like a toddler. What was she hoping to achieve by that? Now, I was the first speaker after Kelly J opened the meeting. Somebody on Facebook afterwards said I looked out of sorts. I was. I was completely spaced out through not having slept or eaten, and I should have eaten because I was on medication. But the fact that the bullies were making so much noise made me determined to speak, even though I didn't have to, and it was extremely difficult. Just after I got hold of the mic and started speaking, some woman started screaming, trans women are women. I got a good view of her and she looked crazed. She looked like a wild-eyed window licker. But she knew damn well that she could do that. She could come and stand surrounded by turfs and shout nonsense and she wasn't going to get hurt. 
If it had been the other way round, any turf behaving like that in a crowd of gender nutters would not have come away unscathed. Sisters, it's been five years and five days since I was assaulted by three trans activist thuggish men. The woman was later identified as one Carly Mae Kavanagh, a Labour Party member and a policy caseworker for Brighton MP Lloyd Russell Moyle. And not long afterwards, she and her mate covered themselves in glory by speaking to a man holding a baby like this. How is it possible for anyone to be so deluded? The man presumably expressed some point of view in line with gender critical thinking, and Carly Mae Kavanagh, Labour Party policy caseworker, calls that filth. What? Those nasty women accuse him of raising his child to be a fascist and they call it disgusting. It doesn't compute. The other woman, by the way, is named something that looks Finnish. So Rosa Hiranen or something like that. And she describes herself as a writer, singer and performer. You'll be forgiven for never having heard of her, nor has anyone else. The story quickly went viral and made headlines, and then Carly May apologised. How gracious. But not to the man she'd insulted, not for her attempt to disrupt a peaceful event, but to the trans community, her trans friends she was trying to protect. Protect from what, exactly? If the protesters had stayed away, Women and our male allies would have had a peaceful event. There would have been no trouble and nothing would have made the headlines after it. Instead, they behaved like the nasty, intolerant, hateful bigots they are, and that is now how they are viewed by everyone who reads about it. Rumour has it she has been suspended from the Labour Party, whether temporarily or permanently, I do not know, but the party won't do themselves any favours letting her back in and letting her keep her job. She's clearly a liability. Mind you, Carly Mae Kavanagh didn't behave any worse than any other protester. They all stood screaming their hate at us all afternoon. It was so ironic to see people who were behaving like this. holding placards like this. Love trumps hate. Yeah, we see the love. And this, that says no to bigotry and hate. And this, hate is not a protected right, yet they behave as if it is, while women are talking about what is happening to them in their lives to their children, disabled children, autistic children, these contemptuous individuals spewed hate at the top of their voices hour after hour. They couldn't really have been any more hateful. The police did arrest three men, one for throwing a smoke bomb. Another one who was falsely reported as being a woman was arrested. I believe it was for um, obstructing a police officer, but I'm not sure. And a third one for sexual assault. None of these were on our side. But to be fair, I understand that the third one, 50-year-old man called Craig Thomas of No Fixed Abode, did not come with the gender nutters. He rolled drunk out of a pub across the road and decided to join in with the misogynistic bullying. He allegedly sexually assaulted someone. He was arrested and searched and found to have knives in his back. That's really disturbing. 
And every time someone got arrested, they'd shout. Under what power? What? Do they not know that the police have power to arrest people who break the law and assaulting people and throwing smoke bombs is breaking the law? And the other thing that they shout at the police is shame. Yeah, shame they arrested violent criminals, right? They should have just let them carry on assaulting us and throwing smoke bombs at people. Thanks, by the way, to the YouTube channel called A Carrot for allowing me to use those clips. I'll link to the whole of her footage on her channel below. So one of my personal highlights of the day happened when I was trying to film one of the arrested men being put into a police van and some silly twit tries to block my view. I ended up shouting at her and some bloke intervened. Arrest and love them! Hello. Sorry, I'm not in the way. Oh, sorry. Are you being a twat? Yeah, I am. Uh, just get out of my face! Understand? Wait, enough! Now! Stay the fuck away from me! I didn't Anyone! Again, what was the point, apart from proving that these people don't know how to behave like decent human beings? Talking of which, as I said, I took some leaflets I'd made, and I, I think I ought to put these leaflets on my website so that if you want to run them off and take them to your event and hand them out you can do so I'll do that in the fullness of time um, so I'd made the leaflets to hand out to passers-by who were walking past the edge of the park whom I assumed were not uh, connected to the event either as the goodies or as the protesters and most people seemed happy to take one. Some people, on the other hand, made it obvious that they were gender nutters in plain clothes and refused them because they are obviously happy with women and children being hurt. One very young guy made the point even more strongly by taking one and tearing it up without even looking at it. And then, as I continued walking round the south side of the park, a scum of gender nutters surrounded me, screeching. I think one of them pushed my bonnet in front of my face. Oh, watch. I knew this had happened, but I was so spaced out. I couldn't remember much detail until someone sent me that footage. I certainly couldn't hear what any of them were shouting at me because they were all shouting at once. I was aware that one of them had tried to grab my flag and the woman who sent me the footage said she had stopped him. I also remember a guy trying to snatch the pile of leaflets from my hand. He failed and I shouted at him and soon afterwards a couple of rosers and a steward turned up. I don't remember being scared at all, just annoyed. I don't get scared of these people anymore because I just don't care. Every act of bullying or violation is ammunition I will use against them. As you can see, the video maker 
followed me for a while. Just on the end of this one, cool. Good And I was fine. Soon afterwards, however, I got very upset and I know a lot of people saw me in tears. This is what happened. This bloke has not stayed behind the police line with the other bullies, but has walked freely into our area. And I heard later that he had been antagonizing women for a while. He seemed personable in the sense that he wasn't shouting, he didn't look angry, and he seemed amenable to conversation. I can't remember how it came to be that I was standing in a small group with him and a couple of other women, including a steward, my husband, and a policewoman was there. And one of the women mentioned the assaults on me to him, and he said, I know all about the assault and he turned to me and asked whatever happened to my camera's memory card that was a really bizarre question from someone who claimed to know all about the assault because the most important piece of evidence about the assault was on that card and it went missing mysteriously all that was on it was my footage of a bunch of protesters shouting and then my assailant, my first assailant, Tara Wolf, charging at me, swatting the camera from my hands, which I retrieved and tried to get footage of him as he went hiding behind his mates like the little sissy he is. And then I was attacked by his two mates and my camera was wrested from me and smashed to the ground. So, of course, I said to this big guy, I said, uh, the memory card was stolen. And he said, nope, you kept the memory card because you'd taken pictures of people's genitals. This was the first time I'd ever heard this particular accusation. In the court, the defence witnesses had lied and said I'd gone round taunting people and shoving my camera in their faces. There was no evidence of that whatsoever. Obviously, if I'd gone round harassing people, at least some of them would have filmed me doing so. But of course, no such footage exists because it didn't happen. So I think I was pretty much speechless. Maybe um, I said something like, don't be ridiculous, why would I do that? And I turned to my husband, who hadn't heard, and told him what had been said. And then the police officer wanted to know what we were talking about. So Alan told her, told her pretty much the whole story. In the meantime, this man said to me something like, what compensation had I received for the assault on me? And I said, none. And he turned away and I said, what's your point? He wouldn't answer. So I said in a loud voice, the man, meaning Tara Wolf, had punched me in the face. He was on Facebook telling women to suck his C-O-C-K. And you think, like the judge did, that I should call him she. The fact that I didn't was one reason why the judge didn't award compensation. I noticed the policewoman did like a double take. She said, bloody hell or something like that. This was obviously a revelation to her and hopefully helped her peak trans if she hadn't already. Anyway, soon after she suggested we end the conversation, which I was very glad to do, and we went our separate ways and then Without warning, the tears started flowing. I know a lot of people saw that I was upset and it's important you know why. Here, by the way, is a pic of me upset.
It's nothing to do with being shouted at, sworn at, called a fascist, being mobbed, having my leaflets torn up, my bonnet pushed over by people who are no better than playground bullies. Water off a duck's back. What hurts is when people lie about what happened to me. Even five years later, they're still lying. And the reason it hurts is because, as I said last time, I used to have quite a strong faith in the goodness of humankind, and I have totally lost that now, thanks to people like this bloke and Tara Wolf, with whom, by the way, he said he once shared a house, probably a squat, and all the others who turn out to spew hate at women. These people are shit, and I despair at the thought of so many shit people in this world in which my grandchild is growing up. I am terrified. And afterwards, it occurred to me that I hadn't got any footage of this bloke, so I went and got some. Here it is. The reason I'm filming this bloke is because he accused me of using my camera to take pictures of naked genitals of the people who eventually... Um, assaulted me at Peeper's Corner and smashed my camera and they stole the memory card and he has presented this entirely alternative alternative narrative that suits his misogynistic agenda. What a cop. So I can only urge you to remember his face and give him wide berth if you see him, because he's a shit human being. Having said all that, it's okay to get upset. It's inevitable sometimes in this monstrous war that is being waged on us. We get upset and we get over it. We are not bloody snowflakes and we don't need to be mollycoddled because we're not like them, right? I'll leave you with the speech I made so you can stop watching if you've already seen it or don't want to see it and I'll link to Kelly J's videos with all the speeches below. I'll be back soon. Bye for now. As I was about to say, five years since I was assaulted, I am now in a place where I can finally admit that it was a good thing that happened. I can admit that it was good what all those vile, obsessed, lying, trans activists, bullies, how they responded and how they still behave today. And as for that silly old bugger, that district judge, Kenneth Brown, I actually think it's a good thing the favour he showed to the woman beater. All of these things helped to peak trans thousands of people and it's still happening today thanks to my YouTube channel and everybody else who's publicised it. The man who was convicted, his name was Tara Wolf, calls himself the Turf Slayer just an indication of how deluded he is. Do I look like a slain turf? No. No. Adorable. And all the rest of them, including those idiots that have come here today, are turf creators. But they're too stupid to believe that the louder they shout, the more of us there will be, and the louder we will get. I was hoping to blend in with the enemy. No, I wasn't. No, really, I came here, especially after seeing what happened in Leeds yesterday. I really wanted to take the piss out of the women who accompany their courageous men folk and support them in trying to fully intimidate.
congratulate drown out our voices and every time I see those women I see this I see handmaidens and I can't tell you how much I despise them the time and effort they put into betraying every woman who fought for their rights, the rights they enjoy today without even thinking about it. I started my working life before the Sex Discrimination Act, before the Equal Pay Act was fully enacted, before, long before, my, uh, rape in marriage was criminalised, and around the same time that the very first domestic violence refuge was opened in this country for women, possibly the most in the world, back then it would have seemed insane, insane to allow a man, whatever he calls himself, to seek refuge in that shelter, in that um, house in Chiswick. And it would have been unthinkable to allow convicted sex offenders into women's prison. Yeah. It's still insane, but it's no longer unthinkable because of the utter contempt these people have for women. These things are happening now. Our rights are being eroded because of the demands of sick-minded men with their fetishes and instead of standing with us and fighting them, the handmaids are enabling them. To those handmaids, I would say, blessed be the fruit of your wounds, but only if they're boys, because of your enablement, they'll be able to do whatever the hell they like. Crack male sports? No problem. Just say you're a girl and crush the dreams of promising young sporting women. Who cares? How many girls, right? But if your daughter happens to see a penis in a swimming pool changing room, well that's her fault. She shouldn't have been looking. A woman actually said that. Shame on you, Laurie Penny. Finally, I have been a feminist for 50 years. I still call myself one in spite of the bad name being given to feminism by things of happiness. But in my day, when I was young, feminism was a movement for women's liberation, not for male entitlement to redefine what it is to be a woman. should be terrified. We all saw that masked monster of Bristol screaming his blind hate at us with his hard on. We all heard about that bloke pouring bottles of urine over himself and everywhere else. And these are the men that those women want to invite into our spaces. What the hell is wrong with them? It's time to lose that need for male approval, however warm and fuzzy it makes you feel inside, and join us in fighting to hold on to our sex-based rights and protections and to fight for the liberation of actual women. That's right.